Hi, I'm Gus. Edith, Lulu, and Neelan. We're from Minnesota, USA. Join us in Cardinal Chito every Sunday on the Word Exposed on Jestom TV. Thank, Thank you, you and God, God bless. bless. Konnichiwa. Ako si Aben mula sa Japan. Ako po si Justine from Singapore. Samahan niyo kami at si Cardinal Chito Tagle tuwing linggo sa the Word Exposed sa Jestom TV. See you! 안녕하세요. 저는 한국에서 온 추준호 예레미야입니다. 제가 정말 좋아하는 우리 타글레 추기 형님과 함께하는 The World Exposed 때 여러분 모두를 초대합니다. Thank you. Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Jazzcom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Maya pa yoras kay kayo ngon. Ako'y Joel Ocampo, taga-syudad ng Angeles, lalawigan Pampanga, keting bansang Pilipinas. Agkatanda kayong manalbe word exposed. Iti pa ni Munaneng Cardinal Chito Tagle at Ayal Benya balang Domingo, King Jesscom TV. Hi, I'm Mark Aris Ramos from Santa Maria, Bulacan. Join us in Cardinal Chito every Sunday on The Word Exposed. Only here on Jazzcom. May mga adlaw sa tanan. Ako galing si Yuvaladera, isa kapamatan on ng Katoliko diri sa Bacolod City, Negros Occidental. Update nyo kami ni Cardinal Chito kada Domingo diri sa Word Expose sa Jazzcom TV. Hi! I'm Yana from Dubai! Join us in Cardinal Chito every Sunday on Jazzcom TV!
ang bisita iglesia nagaganap sa Webes Santo pagkatapos ng misa ng huling hapunan. Ito ay umangkop sa kalagay ko sa ating kultura, sa ating pagiging Pilipino. Dahil uh, una, tayo mga Pilipino ay uh, may kababaang loob na humingin ng tawad. Alam nyo, makikita natin ito bilang isang reenactment no? ng realidad ng ating pagka-Kristyano eh, bilang isang pilgrim people. At nais nating tumuloy, no, matapos yung pilgrimage na yun, sa lugar kung saan natin makakatagpo ang Panginoon, in a very special way. from Kawit Cavite. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on The Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Mabuhay! Ako si Jen Somanyo ng Bayan ng Balagtas, Lalawigan ng Bulacan, Bansang Pilipinas. Samahan niyo po kami ni Cardinal Chito Tagle tuwing linggo sa The Word Exposed dito lamang sa Jescom TV. Eu sou o Cid Roberto, de Brasília, Brasil, e estou aqui todo domingo com o cardeal Luiz Antônio Tagre no programa de World Exposed, pela Giscon TV. Junte-se a nós! Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Giscom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ang bisita iglesia, 
nagaganap sa Webes Santo pagkatapos ng Misa ng Huling Hapunan. Ito ay umangkop sa kalagay ko sa ating kultura, sa ating pagiging Pilipino. Dahil uh, una, tayo mga Pilipino ay uh, may kababaang loob na humingi ng tawad. Alam nyo, makikita natin ito bilang isang reenactment no? ng realidad ng ating pagka-Kristyano eh, bilang isang pilgrim people. At nais nating tumuloy no, matapos yung pilgrimage na yun. Sa lugar kung saan natin makakatagpo ang Panginoon in a very special way. Tagni-tagni pa rin Pananampalataya mo Sa akin Nagsisiksikan din Sa puso mo Ang iyong mga agam-agam Di mo na nga Makuhang pagkaputin pa Ang iyong takbo at hininga May nalilimutan ka Paaalala ko lamang sa iyo Oh, my. 
Good evening, my dear friends. A blessed Holy Week to all of you. I am Father Ro Atilano of the Society of Jesus, Associate Director of Jesuit Communications, and welcome to the annual Lenten Recollection of The Word Exposed. The Word Exposed is the Sunday TV show of our beloved Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, aired at ANC on, and on various social media platforms like YouTube and Facebook. It is also seen in various continents of the world through iCatholic TV and the Catholic Faith Network in the U.S., Salt and Light in Canada, and Shalom World TV in Australia. Tonight's special recollection is our special offering to Cardinals' media followers to help them pray in this holy and solemn season of the year. When the Cardinal was still based in the Philippines, we held these recollections at the Araneta Coliseum. Now we continue to gather and in fact are able to reach more people now that they are available online. For our short recollection tonight, the Cardinal has chosen to reflect on the theme, God's seeming absence in times of suffering. You see, for the past three years into the pandemic, some of us lost a loved one, a friend, Others lost their jobs and livelihood. Still, there are many of us who continue to suffer from anxiety or some other mental stress. For most of us, we find it more difficult to find God in times of suffering. And so tonight, let us listen to our dear Cardinal's reflection as to how to find God in His seeming absence. Friends, our recollection will just be an hour so after his points, the Cardinal will conclude the recollection and give us his final blessing. So feel free to take down notes. Tell your friends about this recollection. And after this premiere, we will make this recollection available on our pages in YouTube and Facebook. Our recollection master needs no introduction. He is the pro prefect of the Castery for evangelization. And despite his busy schedule, he continues to be passionate about the word exposed and the Philippines. And for that, we are forever grateful. So without much further ado, brothers and sisters, please welcome, direct from Rome, 
Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our annual Lenten recollection. And once again, we thank all of you as we also thank the Jesuit Communications Foundation for organizing this uh, Lenten recollection. This year, we thought of uh, focusing on a theme which is not really new, but which might merit a new and a renewed way of looking. And it is God's seeming absence in times of suffering. In our experience and the day-to-day -day life, and even in the history of uh, philosophy, culture, and religions, the question of God is almost always posed in relationship to the existence of evil and suffering in the world. Lagi po yung naitatanong na iba-ibang forma po ng tanong. Sabi nung iba, kung mayroong Diyos, bakit may pagdurusa? That reveals that we have an expectation of God. We have an image of God that is not in harmony with suffering. Merong nagtatanong na kung tunay siyang Diyos, bakit wala siyang nagagawa? para pigilan ang kasamaan at ang pagdurusa na naidudulot nito sa ibang tao. So I, I'm sure you have heard similar questions. And they are serious questions. We don't dismiss them. And we should not dismiss them. Especially when they come from people who suffer. People who suffer because of the evil inflicted on them by other people. Bakit para walang magawa ang Diyos? But for this recollection, I do not intend to go through all the details. I don't even want to go to what philosophies and theologies say regarding this question. I would like to invite you rather to focus on Jesus, his own experience of suffering. And then in the experience of Jesus, we can get some insight into God's seeming absence. No. But from the point of view of Jesus and what Jesus shares with us in his words, in his comportment, in the way he handles himself. But let me prepare ourselves for this reflection on Jesus by saying that in the, in the Bible, there are figures whom we can even consider as Christ-like figures who grappled with this uh, experience of suffering before God. Uh, let us, for example, take Jeremiah. In chapter 20, verse 14, he says, Cursed be the day on which I was born. May the day my mother gave me birth never be blessed. This man who accepted the calling to be a prophet and who was faithful no, to his mission of uh, Proclaiming the word of God, what did he get in return? He got derision. He got anger. People persecuted him. He suffered. Not because of his own words, but because of the word of God. But the beautiful thing with Jeremiah is, as he was almost uh, uh, ready to give up, he says, uh, no, your word, I devoured your word. And your word is like fire in my bones. I cannot resist it. Aha. 
So he was willing to suffer all the more, you know, because of the mission that he has received. Another clear example in the Bible is Job, the just man. He, in chapter 3, verse 3, says, Perish the day on which I was born, the night when they said, the child is a boy. So even this gift of life uh, did not mean anything anymore because of suffering. But actually, he suffered all the more because he refused to curse God. He was being prompted by his wife, his friends, said, your suffering is a curse from God. You, you, you must admit that. You must admit that you probably did not, you did not uh, uh, find favor with God. So you curse God. No. But he refused. He refused. And in that sense, God triumphed. God triumphed. He, he believed in Job's integrity. Na kahit na nagdurusa si, si Job, hindi niya, hindi siya gagawa ng masama. God trusted in him and he was rewarded a hundredfold. We have the Queen Esther who brought the sufferings of her own people. And in chapter 4 says, My Lord, you alone are our king. Help me who am alone and have no help but you. Aha. The suffering of Esther, being alone, not knowing where to turn to, but then trying, trying to turn to God. Jesus, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, verse 27, cried out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was praying. This comes from Psalm 22. But I would like to believe that this is almost like the apex of his cry of sorrow and pain. Kumbaga po, parang naipon, naipon ang kanyang karanasan ng pagdurusa. At dito parang sumabog sa kanyang pagsigaw sa Diyos. This carries the cry of his own people his people that has, have suffer, suffered a lot. This was the peak of his suffering. But he described his suffering as that of being abandoned by God, being forsaken by God. That was his experience. Suffering as being left alone, just like the experience of Queen Esther like the experience of Job, the experience of Jeremiah, suffering as being alone or left alone. The cross was not the only experience of Jesus being left alone. You remember, kapapanganak pa lang niya, gusto na siyang patayin ni Herodes. And then progressively, you have the misunderstanding that he experienced from his listeners and even the religious leaders of the time. Then he had his family. Some of them did not understand him too. They thought he was beside himself. Then he chose his friends, his disciples. He taught them the secrets of the kingdom. But many times... They also did not 
understand. And that left him alone. Parang hindi siya nakakaugnay. Sasabihin nga ng mga tao, parang hindi nakoconnect siya. You can imagine his frustration. You can imagine his, his aloneness. And then progressively, doing a lot of good things, signs that speak of God's power in him. The more he did these signs, the more people went against him. Even his closest friends progressively abandoned him. Not only through a lack of understanding, but even you know, leaving him alone at his moment of sorrow in the agony in the garden. He opened his heart, heart to them. Oh, my heart is filled with sorrow. Please be with me. But they almost ignored him. Then one of them betrayed him. Peter, who professed to be his closest friend in the end, even <laughs> denied him with a curse. And imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, the suffering, the aloneness of being dragged from your friends, being brought to trial. Alone. And to make it worse, they insulted him. They mocked him. They called him the king of the Jews, but used the term as an insult. They were teasing him. They were making fun of him. They were not respecting him. They knelt before him to mock him. And he walked alone to Calvary. No wonder, no wonder that experience of being alone, being alone, being isolated, being alone, reached its peak on the cross. Where he brought not only his own experience, but the experience of the sufferings of his people expressed in Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? One author said that this is, yes, a quotation, but it is significant that Jesus quotes this psalm. You know, people accuse Jesus of being very familiar with God, he called God Abba, Father. And he claimed how the Father and he are one. But here, according to one author, Jesus calls God, God, rather than Father. For on the cross, there is no familiarity. He felt alone. And which father leaves a son alone? Yet he prays. This is the mystery. Kung iniwanan ka na niya, Bakit siya pa rin ang iyong tinatawag? This is the mystery of the suffering of Christ. He continues praying to the one who seems distant, the one who seems to have abandoned him. He continues to relate with God by calling on God, by praying to God. Please focus on Jesus, the suffering one. In his suffering, he calls on the one who feels distant. And according to St. Luke's gospel, he cried out, Father, into your hands. I abandon, I commend 
my spirit. Look at the two ways by which abandonment occurs. The suffering one feels alone and feels abandoned by someone powerful. But in this case, Jesus, the suffering one, abandons himself and trusts himself, surrenders himself to the one who seems distant. And all of this is happening in prayer. Kahit parang iniwanan mo ako, tatawagin pa rin kita. Kahit parang hindi, ka nari, hindi mo ako naririnig, sisigaw pa rin ako sa iyo. Kahit hindi kita nararamdaman, iupapaubaya ako ang aking sarili sa iyo. In Jesus, we see the Son of God made flesh. That's the, con the confession of Peter. You are the Son of the living God. So Jesus' prayer on the cross as the abandoned one, as the suffering one, tells us, where is God in the midst of suffering? God is in the prayer of the one who continues calling on God in the midst of suffering. God is present in the one who continues to believe even when the one he calls or she calls may seem distant. God is present in the one who continues to hope in the midst of difficulties and persecution. God is present in the one who suffers but continues to hope to see God's hand even in a, in a blurred way. God is present in the one who entrusts himself in the mysterious hands that he does not feel. My dear brothers and sisters, God is there. God is there. The son of the living God who is praying. There is another dimension to this. According to the theologian Thomas Halleck, what Jesus experienced and expressed in the prayer, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me, is the so-called Distance of God. You feel God distant from you. But if you look at it closely, we, by our sin, by our sin, we keep God distant. Ganyan po ang kasalanan eh. Ang kasalanan ay ang pagsasabi sa Diyos, lumayulayo ka nga. Huwag mo akong pakikialaman. Lumayulayo ka. The distance of God is a consequence of sin. The distance of God is experienced by us as a consequence of our sin. Sin is shutting off God. It is a declaration on the part of the sinner, I don't want you. In Psalm, Psalm 14, verse 1, it is said, The fool, meaning the sinner, says in his heart, there is no God. Ayan. Ganyan ang kasalanan. Hindi lamang malayo ang Diyos, kundi walang Diyos. Now, but Jesus has no sin. Jesus is the sinless one. But why does he experience this distance of God? My dear brothers and sisters, for us. He experiences the distance from God brought by our sins. He embraced us sinners as brothers and sisters, including 
our experience of shutting off God, including our experience of telling God, you don't exist. Lumayo ka sa akin. Jesus embraced that, even if he was not a sinner. So his suffering is brought about also by his communion with us, by his solidarity with us. He wanted to embrace us so much that even the darkness, the dark consequence of sin, which is the distance of God, became his experience. This is the suffering of someone who out of compassion for sinners is willing to embrace the dire consequences of sins he did not commit. But then it brought him to understand us. Lalo niya tayong naunawaan kasi bagamat hindi siya nagkasala, pinagdusahan niya ang parang paglayo ng Diyos na tanging mga makasalanan lamang ang nakakaranas. Ganyan tayo kamahal ni Jesus. That is the quality of His suffering. The quality of communion, of compassion. Making Him really a brother ready to intercede for us according to the letter to the Hebrews. Kayo pong mga magulang, di ba pag nagdurusa yung mga anak nyo, may sakit, kayo mismo napapasabi, ako na lang, ako na lang ang magkasakit. Huwag po siya. Kahit kayo ay walang sakit, handa yung yakapin ng sakit. Mailigtas lang yun. Napakaliit na bagay po yan. Yung ginawa ni Jesus, higit na higit pa dyan. So he suffered. And according to St. Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 21, For our sake, God made Jesus to be sin. Who did not know sin? So that we might become the righteousness of God. He was made sin. He was made to experience the distance of God, which is the effect of sin. Even if he did not sin. Why did he do that? For us. That's the suffering of Jesus. Suffering for us. Suffering the consequences of what we have done. Where is God in the suffering? God is in the one, is present in the one who suffers out of solidarity with sinners. God is present in the suffering of the one who is compassionate to others. God is present in the one who suffers out of mercy and compassion for erring sinners. God's seeming absence is really a presence in the one who prays and in the one who shows mercy and compassion. Inaanyayahan ko po kayo na magnilay. Alam ko, hindi naman tayo kapantay ni Jesus. Subalit, siguro meron naman tayong naging mga karanasan na parang kahit para tayo nag-iisa, hindi pa rin tayong tumitigil ng pagtawag sa Diyos. At doon sa ating panalangin, nandun siya. Bakit? Wala namang kayang manalangin kung hindi sa pamamagitan ng Espiritu Santo. No one can call God Abba, Father, except in the Holy Spirit. So if you continue to pray, even when God seems distant, the Holy Spirit is working in, in you and God is present. When you are willing, no, talagay ko marami rin kayong karanasan, na kayo ay handang humakbang kahit magdusa pa para sa kapwa na kailangang tulungan. 
nandun ang Diyos. Sa inyong puso na handang magdusa para magmahal sa kapwa. We learn all of this in Jesus, the image, the human image of the invisible God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. My God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes set upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots by you. My God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you, you who fear the Lord. Praise him, all you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him, revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Welcome to the second part of our Lenten Recollection. At uh, patuloy po tayo nagpapasalamat sa lahat ng nagninilay no po, sa kwaresmang ito upang hindi lamang mabago tayo kundi upang ang pagdiriwang ng Pagka, pagpapakasakit, pagkamatay ni Jesus at ang kanyang muling pagkabuhay ay talagang maging malakas na puwersa para po sa bagong buhay at para po sa, sa, sa sambayanan din. Hindi lamang po para sa ating pansariling kabanalan. And uh, for this uh, Lenten recollection, we have chosen the theme of God's seeming absence, seeming huh? in times of suffering. Katulad ng nabanggit natin kanina, kapag may pagdurusa, parang isa sa nakukwestiyon 
ay ang Diyos. Anong klaseng Diyos ba siya? O kaya'y meron bang Diyos? But we have been focusing on the experience of Jesus. His suffering. And we saw that in His suffering expressed in the words of the psalm, Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you abandoned Him? His suffering was caused by this progressive aloneness, being left alone by people, leading him to experience that distance of God. But we saw the mystery. He continued praying to the one who seems to have abandoned him. He continues calling on God, calling on God his Father. And in the end, entrusting his broken body, his broken life to the Father who seems distant. God is present in the prayer of the suffering person. In the anguish of the suffering person who turns to God, God is present. For no one can call God Father except in the Holy Spirit. Then we saw how this experience of the distance of God is actually a consequence of sin. Kapag tayo ay nagkakasala, inilalayo natin ang sarili natin sa Diyos. Parang mas mabuti nga, mas malayo ang Diyos. Jesus experienced that even if he was not a sinner. But he experienced it because of his solidarity with us. He embraced our condition. He assumed this distance of God from sinners so that he could save them. So where is God? God is present in the one who suffers because of compassion for neighbors. God is present in the one who is willing to suffer in order to be a compassionate brother or sister to others. For this second part, I will go to the resurrection appearance. No. Especially in John 20. On the evening of the first day of the week, Jesus appeared to the disciples who were gathered in a room. They were hiding, actually, out of fear. But Jesus, the risen one, was able to enter the room, to penetrate closed doors and walls. After greeting them with peace, he showed them his hands and his side. He showed them his wounded hands and side. He showed them the signs of his suffering. Then he breathed on them the Holy Spirit and gave them a mission of forgiveness and reconciliation. We would think huh, human logic would dictate that the victorious God the victorious Son of God should not anymore carry any signs of His suffering. Ganyan tayo mag-isip eh. Ang gusto nating Diyos yung walang sugat. Gusto nating Diyos yung walang karanasan ng pagdurusa. But, as I said at the beginning of this recollection, we won't discuss those things, some ideas of God. We focus on Jesus and how God is revealed in Jesus. And here, the God that Jesus reveals is a victorious God, victorious over sin and death. But in God's victory, the nails, the nail marks, and the, the mark on the side remain. The victory of God does not erase the sufferings, the memories of the sufferings of Jesus. The victory of God 
does not negate that there are people who suffer. The victory of God brings us to a deeper understanding of the presence of God. Even if we say the seeming absence of God. Thomas was not present when Jesus, the risen one, appeared. But he expressed a wish. I want to see. No, and I want to touch those wounds of Jesus. Eh, siguro hindi siya makapaniwala dito, hindi niya mapaniwalaan yung kanyang mga kapwa apostoles. Eh, si kilala rin naman niya eh. <laughs> kilala rin naman niya si Pedro. Kilala niya yung mga iba. Kaya siguro medyo kulang siya sa paniniwala sa kanila. Pero maganda rin yung gusto niya. I want to see and touch the wounds of Christ. And then, Jesus returned and talked with Thomas and showed Thomas his wounds and told Thomas, put your finger here. Now touch me. See and touch. And Thomas declared, my Lord and my God. Thomas did not see only a human person. Thomas did not see only uh, the Messiah, the Lord, but saw God, my Lord and my God. He confessed the divinity of Jesus when he saw the wounds of Christ. Lalo niyang, lalong napagtibay ang, ang presensya ng Diyos noong nakita niya ang sugat ni Jesus. The wounds of Christ did not make him doubt the divinity of Christ. It was the wounds of Christ that led him to confess, My God, my God, the wounded one is God. Earlier, earlier in the gospel, in John 19, Please remember this episode. Jesus was brought to Pilate for judgment because the high priests already had decided Jesus deserved death for blasphemy. But as religious leaders, they could not uh, impose the death penalty, the crucifixion. So it must be done by the governor, Pilate. So Jesus was brought to Pilate. Pilate interrogated him and saw that it was envy that was the real cause of all this mess. And the wife of uh, Pilate told him not to meddle in this because she had a dream no, about who Jesus was. Now, to satisfy the thirst for blood, as it were, of the people, and the enemies of Jesus, he, Pilate, had him scourged, wounded. And after the scourging of Jesus, Pilate presented him to the people, wounded, wounded, wounded. And Pilate said, Behold the man. Jesus is being proclaimed by, by Pilate as the image of humanity, wounded humanity, wounded humanity. Behold the man. Later on, Thomas will see the wounded Jesus and say, my Lord and my God. God seen in wounded humanity. And Jesus brings in his body the wounds of humanity, which now become the wounds of God. 
God is in the suffering person who embraces our humanity. God does not dignify suffering inflicted on others. Huwag po natin iisipin ganun, ho. Hindi po natin sinasabi na gusto ng Diyos na tayo ay magbigay ng sugat sa iba. Hindi gusto ng Diyos na tayo ang maging sanhi ng pagdurusa ng iba. Hindi po yun ang mensahe. Hindi po yun ang, ang uh, sinasabi sa atin ng banal na kasulatan. God does not agree with the suffering inflicted on people, especially the innocent ones. But God is present in the wounded ones. This gives consolation to those who are wounded unjustly by others. But at the same time, this poses a judgment on all of us. Remember the 25th chapter of St. Matthew. Where was Jesus? Where was Jesus present? In the hungry, in the thirsty, in the stranger, in the naked, in the sick, and in those in prison. The righteous wondered, Jesus, when, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, naked, ill, in prison, or a stranger, and we did something good to you. And Jesus says, whatever good you do to the least of my brothers, especially those who are wounded and are suffering, you are doing it to me. I am in there. I am in their wounds. I am in them. They may not also realize it. And those who are doing good may not realize it, but in this seeming absence, God is there in the wounded. That consoles us. But there is also something disturbing. Those who did not do anything good for the wounded wonder. Why, Lord, when did we deny you food, water, clothing, shelter, or a visit? When did we deny you that? And Jesus said, if you refuse to do, to do it to the least of your brothers and sisters, they are my brothers and sisters, I am in them, then you have already denied it to me. So where? Where is God? We ask, behold the man, behold the wounded man. And when you touch the wounds of a brother or a sister, like Thomas, like Thomas, profess in faith, my Lord is here. My God is here in this mess, in this misery. God may not be felt, but God is here. He does not abandon. People will feel they are abandoned by God only when brothers and sisters abandon. The seeming absence of God is a human experience that must be viewed in faith. And we thank the Lord, the Lord Jesus, who came as one of us, 
and entered the many consequences of our rejection of God, sin that leads to death. And by our sin, we are almost killing God. But Jesus assumed, entered that aloneness that we want, you know, that isolation from God, that false independence from God. Jesus entered that and cried out and turned it into a prayer and turned it into solidarity with the suffering. God is there. God is there. So Jesus, Jesus is the presence of God in suffering and in suffering humanity. My dear brothers and sisters, let us be, during this Holy Week, especially during the Good Friday services, let us be attentive when we come close to the cross of Christ, when we come close to the, uh, the Sa Santo Sepulcro, when we approach the Blessed Mother in her suffering, in her grief, you know, let us bring the eyes of faith that Jesus wants us to bring. And let us enter the heart of the Blessed Mother. She suffered. I could just imagine our Blessed Mother standing there at the foot of the cross of Jesus, also alone, except for a few women, courageous women, and the beloved disciple. All the rest have abandoned Jesus and have abandoned her. The suffering of the mother who will be left alone. She experienced that. And carrying the lifeless body of her son. That was suffering. But we learned something from her too. She stood at the cross of her son. While others, Peter, Judas, were denying their connection with Jesus. And seemed to be saying, he is absent from our lives. He has nothing to do with us. We don't know him. Mary declared by standing there, he is my son. And I will not leave him alone. And embracing that body exposed her to danger. She is now considered the mother of a criminal. But she will suffer with her son. She will not leave her son alone. So what Jesus did for us, Mary also did for Jesus. The presence of the divine in those who continue to pray and in those who show their presence, their compassion towards those who are wounded and who claim they are my own. They are my own. I would like to end my, this second part, this reflection on this note. And may I leave with you a few questions for your reflection. The first question, when you experience suffering, Does it become an occasion to deeper faith, hope, and love? Or does suffering become an occasion to really distance ourselves from God? The second question is, does my suffering 
lead me to deeper communion with neighbors? Does my suffering lead me to be more compassionate to those who also suffer? Or does my suffering lead me more into myself, isolating myself from the rest of the world? These are the two questions that I would like to leave with you. And depending on our answer there, people seeing our suffering and seeing our reaction or response to their suffering will decide whether God is near or far. Jesus taught us in his suffering, in his prayer and compassion, God is not absent. God is near, very, very near. You tore yourself from home From everything you owned The only son, a hidden son To find the homeless ones You walked our wounded roads In your poor man's clothes The boundless sky God most high bowed before our eyes. Jesus on the cross, shelter for the lost. Reveal your light, befriend our nights, fill our broken lives. You cast yourself to see the net that set us free. The living breath embraced our death to reach our darkest depths. Jesus on the cross, shelter for the lost. Reveal your light, befriend our nights, fill our broken lives. You bear yourself for all. You poured your thirsting soul. Your emptied cup, your every drop has raised the fallen up. Jesus on the cross, shelter for the lost. Reveal your light, befriend our night. Let us pray. Loving Father, please hear the cries of many suffering people. Hear the voice of Jesus in their voices. And when their faith wavers, please send men and women who will assure them that you are with them, that you have not left them alone. Transform us into your presence, especially the presence of love, mercy, consolation to those who are seeking for you. We ask you this, loving Father, through the powerful voice of Jesus, your Son, and the powerful presence and impulse of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Cardinal, for these points. Indeed, God is present even in his seeming absence, especially in times of suffering. 
God is present and accompanying us, especially in our sufferings. Because there is no human experience that is void of God's presence. These are something we can think about and pray over for the rest of the Holy Week. Before we ask the Cardinal for a special blessing, I'd like to, to give some words of thanks. First, special thanks go to Father Marvin Tabion, who assisted the Cardinal during the taping. Second, Jessica would like also to thank our media and social media partners who have cross-posted this recollection to their pages. I would like to personally thank Ernestine Tamana of Chesscom and Justin Pontino of Radio Katipunan for their valuable behind-the-scenes work. And of course, we would like to thank all of you for joining this recollection. Please continue watching The Word Exposed every Sunday at ANC, YouTube, and Facebook. And finally, sa ating mahal, pinakamamahal na kardinal na laging may oras para sa atin, Maraming maraming salamat po, Kardinal, sa iyong panahon at sa inyong patuloy na paggabay sa aming lahat. Good news po mula kay Kardinal at mula sa The Word Exposed. Mapapak mapapakinggan nyo na si Kardinal at ang Word Exposed sa pinakasikat na Catholic app, ang Hallow app. And now, my dear friends, here once again is the Cardinal for a special blessing for all of us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us, and may you have a blessed Holy Week. God bless you all. Musmos ka pa lamang, minahal na kita Mula sa kawalan, tinuring kang anak Sa bawat tawag ko, ika'y lumalayo Mong hakbang nang kita'y akayin Binalabalan ka, matang masintahin Kinakandong kita, anin